Life, how amazing it is to be able to rise up in the morning and have that sun shine on your face. Now on this journey of life, you're gonna face a significant amount of circumstances, a significant amount of challenges. But through all the chaos and all the pain, God built a warrior. And sometimes the only way something's going to change is if we disappear and focus on you. At the center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. The lack of belief is why you're not successful. What if you could just shut out every distraction? What if you could just shut out the world for just a season and focus on you? Can you unplug for just a moment and focus on you, focus on what matters? Just remember, your life is your life and you have the right to live it the best way you can. Why are you here? What is your destiny? And every morning you wake up and you look in the mirror, I want you to look in that mirror and I want you to tell yourself that I am special, I am great, and I am phenomenal. You must discipline yourself. Take control of your life. Nobody will stop me from reaching my goal. I am the designer, I am the designer of my own destiny. My own destiny. It's time for you to shock the world. You may have to sacrifice like nobody in your family ever has. And as long as you have a heartbeat, as long as you have air in your lungs, you have an opportunity to change this world, change your life, and live your dream today. Pursue what you really want with everything you've got. Put your head down and tackle whatever you face head on. Stop thinking, stop procrastinating, and you gotta work. Can you keep going? Don't stop! You're right there! If you hang around sharks long enough, it will transform your mindset. And I promise you, you will be like a shark. You will think like a shark. And you can't go backwards. And if you stop swimming, you will die! It hurts sometimes when you're in that dark place and you feel no one cares about you. The first thing you got to realize is that you got to love yourself. It's about self-love. You can't stop people from trying to limit your dreams, but you can stop it from becoming a reality. You know, I have the saying, work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. Architects, pioneers, innovators, students, athletes, lawyers, Doctors, I'm sounding the alarm that a new mentality will emerge inside of you. You have an opportunity to your future. What do you want and how do you want it? And if it doesn't make you a little afraid, then you ain't playing big enough. Listen to me. You can't have a better tomorrow if you're too busy thinking about yesterday. So it drives me nuts when people say they don't have the time. We have 24 hours a day. There will be many giants in your life. Whatever goal you have, get up and run after it. Dreams don't stop. People do. I'm telling you to keep going when you face opposition. I'm telling you to keep going when you face adversity. Work like hell. Crack the ground and keep moving. Your soul, your intuition, your human spirit is designed to make you soar. And say, I've got to do this. This is my stuff. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is why I showed up. You are not just graduating from college. You're breaking a curse. You are not just getting out of high school. You're breaking a curse. You are not just saved. You're breaking a curse. And everybody around you is about to be blessed because of what God's getting ready to do in your life. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. Others may quit, but not me. It's up to you to keep calm and believe in your purpose.
You're either going to get healthier and wealthier, or you're going to go bust. Your choice. Pursue what you really want with everything you've got. After today, everything is about to change. Because change starts with you. Live. Breathe. Life. You. That's what it's about. Sometimes you gotta take a break from just about everything, disappear, come back, and shock the world. I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that administrator. I'm talking to that nurse, that doctor. I'm talking to that student. I'm talking to that communicator. I'm talking to that pioneer, that inventor. I'm talking to that entrepreneur. I'm talking to that preacher. I'm talking to that person who refuses to stay where they are. I'm talking to that person that doesn't have a problem laying in obscurity because you know that when you come out of the dark room, all eyes on you. We live in a culture of busyness, distraction, and noise. And sometimes the only way something's going to change is if we disappear. Yes. It hurts sometimes when you feel alone. It hurts sometimes when you're in that dark place and you feel no one cares about you. The first thing you got to realize is that you got to love yourself. It's about self-love. Start understanding that if you're going to do something with your life, you got to fall in love with yourself again. You got to stop self-hating yourself. Do something that's going to make you a better person. Make an impact in this world. Don't look at it as though it's something that you got to do temporary. Although we know that life is short. Like many people in this world, they didn't realize that the next day they was going to be diagnosed with a cancer. They thought that tomorrow was going to be waiting for them and they did not wake up. But you are still living. Now what do you have to do? How are you going to move forward? How are you going to proceed your life? Life is not a game. Life is living. There's the good and there's the bad and there's definitely the right now. You can't wait for somebody else to make your life better. You got to make your life better. You got to focus on you. Now I'm not saying forget the rest of the people. But I'm telling you to get rid of the things that are not making you strong, that are not making you better, that are not making you efficient, that's not putting you in a better place, that's not giving you the strength that you need to keep living the life that you have been given. Don't you give up on life, cause once your life is over, you can't come back. Leave your mark. Help someone. Lift someone up when they down. Be the strength for others when they're weak. And maybe when you're at the weakest point in your life, someone will lift you up. Because we all struggle. No one is immune to it. So keep fighting for it. Don't give up. Live. Breathe. Life, you, that's what it's about. It's going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to get tough. But when it get tough, you get tough. Just make sure you make your mark. Make sure you make your mark in this world. Because somebody didn't make it today. But you did. 
Keep living. Keep living strong. Don't give up. And so you gotta do me a huge favor. You gotta do me a huge favor. You gotta get to the point where you don't need a car anymore. You don't need a house anymore. You don't need to be pushed by anybody anymore. Your dreams, your wives gonna push you. Your spouse is gonna push you. Your child is gonna push you. The need to get better is going to push you because you're closer than you're ever going to be. It's gonna push you. You don't need anything to push you. Your goals are gonna push you. Your dreams are gonna push you. The, 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 the opportunity of a lifetime that happens in this particular time frame is gonna push you. It's gonna drive you. It's going to make you better. So do me a favor as I leave. As I leave, you can't be average anymore. 70%, you can't do it. You can't do it and have what you want. You can't give me 70 and be what you want. You can't give me 70 and do what you want. You can't be average anymore. You can't be good anymore. 80%. You can't be good anymore. 80% and have what you want. You can't be good at something and have everything you dreamed of. To make your dreams become real. To no longer dream them but walk in them. You can't. 90%. You can be good. You can be good. You can be great. But you still won't get it all. I'm telling you. But when you become phenomenal, there's nothing you can't have, nothing you can't do, nothing you can't be. And I just, I believe that you're in this room right now. I believe that we're in the same space right now. I believe we're all in this place together. Listen to me. I believe that we're all in this place together because all of us, all of us hate average. None of us want to be good. And for those of us who reach greatness, we have a desire to push past greatness and see what phenomenal looks like. So I need everybody in the room, when you think about your goal and you think about your dream, I need you to understand, as I said to my wife in that hospital room, I can, I will, I must. I need everybody to say it with me. I can, I will, I must. Come on. I can, I will, I must. Again, I can, I will, I must. Now, now for those of you, you want it all. Every single dream, every single goal, as I said, for those of you who really want it, you, you're going to say it and you're going to say it, stand and you're going to say it like you mean it. I can, I will, I must. Come on. I can, I will, I must. Come on. I can, I will, I must. Now say it like you mean it. I can, I will, I must. Again, I can, I will, I must. Again, I can, I will. I must. Now I need you to think about that loved one, that, 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 that individual that you have to do this for. I need you to say it with me. I can, I will, I must. Come on, for that individual. I can, I will, I must. For that person. I can, I will, I must. For that thing you want to accomplish. I can, I will, I must. Again, I can, I will, I must. Now I want you to think about that hurdle. I want you to think about that thing that keeps pressing you down. I want you to think about that, that mountain that's hard to climb. I want you to think about that thing that you just can't seem to get over. We're gonna get over it today. We're gonna get over it. We're gonna get over it together. I can, I will, I must. Uh, we're gonna add to it. I can get over it. I will get over it. I must get over it. Ready? I can get over it. I will get over it. I must. Come on, come on. I can get over it. I will get over it. I must get over it. I know something about you. I know you're not a quitter. I know you're a survivor. I know you're a survivor. If you're watching me right now, I know something about you. You are a survivor. So I, I want you to get off this. I want you to cut it off. I want you to go in the mirror and I want you to make the rest of your life the best of your life. I can, I will, I must. It's your boy ET. The thing about self-discipline is that it is necessary for everything you do in your life. You have to be self-disciplined. Working out, working out, you gotta work out every day. You gotta stay in shape. If you wanna, I mean, if you don't stay in shape, you die. When I'm working out, I always do one extra rep, one extra set, because it, it's a promise I kept to myself. But, but working out might not be a priority for every single day because you've got things going on in your business world and with your family and all that. So guess what? It's a priority for my life, so I do it in the morning before my day even starts. If you change your mindset and really focus it on what discipline really is, you start to welcome discipline. You welcome self-discipline into your life. And here's the biggest thing. It's a pattern. 
It's a pattern I keep of me. I always do a little extra. I always go the extra inch. And the quickest and easiest place to do it is the gym. Because I can always grab one more weight, one more set. And it, here's what it does. It shifts your identity. The benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline, I get things done. I do it in the morning before my day even starts. So I can still handle the priorities for the day, but I got my workout done. So long term, I look up in a year and I'm not out of shape and breathing hard when I go up in the stairs because I maintain that discipline on a daily basis. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. You need to tell you no more snacks, no more desserts, no more TV. No more, no, we working out now. They have skills and abilities, but if you don't nurture them, if you don't develop them, they will never serve you. Your gifts can take you many places if you develop your gifts. The best gifts come from the bottom. I value myself enough to give 120% or don't do it. And that if you decide that my life deserves my developing, this what I do well. Why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts, you'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character. You need to tell you that you owe you something. Why is it so important to get up early? Some of y'all don't want it. That's why you ain't got it. I don't sleep when I'm tired. I sleep when I'm done. The average millionaire wakes up at 4 a.m. So it started off 4 o'clock in the morning where I'd start and I'd start with my cardio, then I'd have breakfast, and then I would go to the gym, and then I'd go to work. Some of y'all have no idea what 4 a.m. looks like. Why would you not wake up at 4.30? Because you're too busy sleeping in. I'm pretty sure I wake up earlier than all of you. We don't sleep when we're tired. We sleep when we are tired. Too busy hitting the snooze button multiple times. Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. And if we can really be honest, some of y'all don't even go to bed until about 4 a.m. If you can get up before the rest of the world is awake, right? Before the enemy's awake, you can get so much done. You're so much more productive. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Wake your ass up. And then they ask me, well, why are you up so early? <laughs> <laughs> Take responsibility to make your life happen. Awaken the beast inside. Wake up at 4 a.m. So I begin to tell myself there must be a reason. When you have something to do, when you have someone to love, when you have something to look forward to, when you get up in the morning, see people who have something to look forward to don't need an alarm clock because they have a reason for being. You, If you want to have one of the best lives in the world, which is you live on your terms, then you have to pay your dues to get there. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want more freedom in your life, you have to have more discipline. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. You decided that you're not gonna go through life being a whiner, being a complainer, that you're gonna take responsibility for what it is that you want to create. The greatest ability that God has given humankind above the animals is the ability to choose. Judge a person not by what they accomplish, but what they had to overcome for their accomplishment. People that are hungry 
have zero excuses for not pursuing their dreams. And they come back again and again and again. They operate like Willie Jolly, who said that a setback is a setup for a comeback. I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. You can get up. You can get up. You can get up. I'm training people to get into their greatness, to begin to develop the courage to pursue dreams beyond their comfort zones. Because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. When you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, so you act like you don't have any. There's never a shortage of opportunities. It's just a shortage of thinking. Because some things are taught and some things are caught. When I was in the fifth grade, they put me back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade. I failed again in the eighth grade. I have no college training. So being identified and labeled as DT, the dumb twin, it, it gave me a, a lot of things to overcome. And so there was no one to dispute what was said about me and I bought it. Even if you are told a lie, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. You hear it often enough, it becomes your reality perception not challenge becomes real for you someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality so if you can track failure you can also track success you have greatness in you I don't know you but here's what I know based upon my own experience you have greatness in you that you have the ability to do more than you could ever begin to imagine you have greatness in you there's a presence in each and every one of us that waits and listens to the voice of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only God you will ever have or hear. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. When you recognize your greatness, no one will ever pull your strings. You are different. You were created on purpose, with a purpose, to manifest that purpose through you. You will never exercise authority and dominion over your life until you exercise authority and dominion over what you are not. Most people go through life living the lie that has been told about them. There's something in you that's greater than your circumstances. There's something in you that's greater than the adversities that you're facing. In life, you're either in a problem, just left one, or headed toward one. You have greatness in you. Every day that you wake up, remember someone else did not. You are alive for a reason. Why on earth are you here? This is your day. You've got a window. You've got another 24 hours because you may not make it to tomorrow. And I'm just wondering what you're going to do with the day. The reason why days often feel meaningless and mundane is because we are directionless. You got to get some direction. I'm just wondering what are you going to do in this next 24 hours that you did not do. I'm just wondering if you're going to level up two millimeters more than you did yesterday. Are you going to get better? Are you going to get stronger? Are you going to get wiser? Are you going to see this thing differently? I'm just wondering when are you going to see the power of 24 hours? That you did not have to wake up. That God did not have to give you another opportunity to be here. Another opportunity to forgive somebody. Another opportunity to let it go. Another opportunity to look up and get up. I'm just wondering when are you going to seize the opportunity? Accept where you are. Get cognizant about your money. Get cognizant about your relationships. Where are you mentally? Where are you spiritually and emotionally and financially and economically? Are you driving what you are destined to drive? Where's your health? Where's your heart? Let's get aware of where we are. This is my day to read a new book. This is my day to start a journey. This is my day to make an investment. This is my day to invest in myself. This is my day and this is my time and it's my turn to crush this day. 
This is the day I learn like I never have. This is the day I invest like I never have. This is the day I take it seriously. I got one window. I may not be here tomorrow. I'm just wondering if you're gonna rise and see the opportunity. Get up, get up, get up. You've got a day to conquer. You really want me on the team. What's your approach to recruit me? You want first place, come play with me. You want second place, go somewhere else. Like, I, I would watch Magic play. I'd watch Michael play. And I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. why he's the best player in the game. 99% of people are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. The center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. You know, some, something as simple as food and eating, it, it's not about your, your body as much as it is about your mind. It's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best interest. Every day, we are choosing shit that's not in our own best interest. So if the world is attacking you and the world wants to fight you and the world's trying to hold you down, so you're going to kick yourself in the balls? So you're going to stop yourself from getting what you dream. And I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name. We think about it in terms of punishment. I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in that way. I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you, you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love. That when you say that you love yourself, that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving. Self-discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Live your life like you're the hero in your movie. And right now, pretend you're in the part of the movie that starts and it shows you as a loser. If I gotta fight to get you in the gym, that's a problem. I'm just saying, for real, some of you broke and you still entertained. I'm talking about those of you who are complaining about your job. You ain't got no money and you sitting here complaining about, but then you watching all the TV programs. I'm never going to feel like doing the things that are tough or difficult or uncertain or scary or new, so I need to stop waiting until I feel like it. We all have a habit of hesitating. The idea isn't going to execute itself. And, and the book isn't gonna write itself, and the, the weights out in the gym, they're not gonna move themselves. You have to do it, and you have to do it now. But there's a motherfucker out there who wants what you have, who wants the position you are, who wants the job you have, who wants the wife that you have, or the husband. There's someone out there hungry and wants everything you can have. But if you're lazy, man, I don't wanna talk to you. I wanna deal with you. You don't make me feel dumber. You know, you're gonna lower my level. I don't think so. The reason why you're so lazy is not because you don't have the ability. You're so lazy because your dream's so small. I believe in myself every day. I know I make mistakes. I know I'm not perfect. But I am not lazy. You can keep sleeping. I'm gonna keep working. They say things like, I'll start Monday. It's not my fault. It's not fair. I'm too damn tired. Or my personal favorite, I don't have enough time. They have a loser mentality through and through. And until they recognize that the problem is them, they'll never improve. I know many talented people 
who had a great deal of potential, but they never realized their greatness, and they will end up going to their grave with all their good stuff still in them. You will be tested, and how you face that test, and how you overcome that test, determines the rest of your life. You got to have something that is inside of you, something that fires you up, something that drives you, something that gives you more power than you've ever had in your life. Your life comes down to your decisions, and if you change your decisions, you will change everything. The best of the best, they don't sleep, they keep working. But what are you going to do? Where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. The hour is now for game changers to emerge. Be truthful to who you are. Life is so short. So it drives me nuts when people say we don't have the time. We have 24 hours a day. I am much more valuable to my family than to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself, teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get them. You're either going to get healthier and wealthier, or you're going to go bust. Your choice. Pursue what you really want with everything you got. Brace yourself, steady your nerves, put your head down, and tackle whatever you face head on. I need you to believe in every possibility that you have and understand that it is not over for you. Let your work get your opportunity. Let your work get your praise. Let your work open the doors. Let your work get people paying attention. Let your work get the whole world to notice. Stop thinking. Stop procrastinating. And you got work. Goliath! There will be many giants in your life. Whatever goal you have, get up and run after it. Your brain is designed to keep you safe. Your soul, your intuition, your human spirit is designed to make you soar. That's not just a book in your hand, that's your sword. That's not just an idea, that's your sword. That's not just a dancing gift, that's your sword. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit during the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. I'm going to rise, and I'm going to show the world that greatness is obtained by a man that never stopped pushing. If you only have 24 hours in a day, your success is dependent upon how you use the 24. You got to hear me. People talk about Oprah Winfrey, you know, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett. Listen to me. I don't care how much money you make. You only get 24 hours in a day. And the difference between Oprah and the person that's broke is Oprah uses her 24 hours wisely. That's it. Listen to me. That's it. You get 24. I don't care if you broke, you grew up broke. I don't care if you grew up rich. I don't care if you're in college, you're not in college. You only get 24 hours. And I blew up literally. I went from being a high school dropout to selling 6,000 books in less than six months. What happened? My 24 hours. I was like, okay, Eric, you got to get a grip on your 24 hours because you're about to be broke for the rest of your life. And this is all I need you to do for me. I can tell you all about your life if you just write down your 24-hour schedule for me and you let me look at it. I can tell you where you're going to be in five years. I can tell you where you're going to be in 10 years. I can tell you where you're going to be in 20 years if you keep that schedule. There's a fight right around the corner just waiting for you. And you better learn how to fight. You got to get up every morning fighting, clawing, scratching. You got to beat depression. You got to beat anxiety. You got to beat the naysayers. You got to beat that little voice in your head that's telling you you're not good enough. When I think about fighting, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about situations. I'm talking about circumstances. I'm talking about opportunities that sometimes you have to fight for. Come on life, let's fight, let's go. Come on job, let's go. Come on career, let's go. 
I'm going to go to war. That dream is not going to just sit there and wait for you to come and get it. You got to chase it. Like a man possessed, you got to go get it. But to win fights, you got to have stamina. You got to be ready to fight and bounce back. Punch and counter punch. Jab and jab back. Let me tell you something. Life is a series of fights. The worst thing you can do is run away from your fights. Because if life is a series of fights and you run away, you just ran away from your life. We got to fight. We got to fight. We can't lay down. When you lay down, you get ran over. When you about to fight, you know a fight's coming, your adrenaline begins to pump, your heart begins to race, your mind gets right and say, look, I'm not going to just fight, I'm going to win this battle, and sucker, you going down. Some of you guys out there are fighting for your life, why? Because the doctor told you you have cancer. You better not feel sorry for yourself, you better not lay down and quit, you better get up and fight, because a happy spirit does a body good like medicine. Fighting for your future, fighting for your dreams, fighting for success. When you come over depression, you raise your arms like a champ. When you overcome bankruptcy, you raise your arms like a champ. When you come over divorce, raise your arms in victory. Sometimes in life, you get caught with a good one. You didn't see divorce coming. You didn't see cheating coming. You didn't see being fired coming. You got sucker punched. Oh, I've been sucker punched before, but that doesn't mean I can't stop fighting. We got to get up, baby. When you get sucker punched, get up. When you get hit in the gut, get up. Because if you want to win this war, you got to learn how to fight one battle at a time, one war at a time. Because you might not win every fight, but you got to win the war. You gotta have the right attitude, the right mindset, the right mentality, not just the fight. It's gonna be a war, and you don't quit until you win. It's gonna be a war. And don't you quit until you win. Wake the f up. The goals that you want to achieve in your life are your f***ing goals and nobody else's. Hundreds of people give up on their goals on a daily basis. And it's usually because they realized quickly after starting their journeys that they're alone. Nobody's waking them up in the morning. Nobody's pushing them when they start to make excuses. And nobody's patting them on the back when they hit a milestone. This is you versus you. Get out of bed. We got goals to achieve, and nobody's coming to hold your hand. This is something you all need to understand. If you want to be the best in whatever you do, you got to start acting different than everybody else. The best of everything comes with a price. It comes from grinding through those late nights. It comes from grinding through those early mornings. It comes from those exhausting days where every fiber of your body is telling you to give up. I want to remind you that you started this journey for a reason. What are you waiting for? It's all on you. And the quicker you realize that nobody's going to come and hold your hand through life, through this journey, the faster you will start to see success. Truth is, your excuses are bullshit. You just gotta step into your fucking power. Nobody can make that change for you. It's gotta come from you. But it's time to grind. So keep pushing forward. You owe it to yourself to keep going. It's time to take responsibility. Understand that you are in control of how you feel every day. So don't get it twisted. This is the hardest grind you're ever gonna have to do in your life. Step into your power and slay the day. Life. How beautiful it is. How amazing it is to be able to rise up in the morning and have that sun shine on your face rather than on your grave. 
What makes life so unique and so beautiful? It is beautiful because whatever you have that you may be facing, what you may be dealing with, life is still good. Life has so many moving parts, but life is always good. Every day is a new day and another opportunity that others may not have. This life that you have been given, this life that you are temporarily holding on to, this life that has been just given to you for only temporary reasons, has more meaning than you can ever imagine. So many people in the world take life for granted instead of realizing that you have to take the opportunity to live it the best way you know how. Now on this journey of life, you're gonna face a significant amount of circumstances, a significant amount of challenges, you're going to fall into areas that you cannot understand. And maybe it's not in a position for you to understand at that moment. When you start to feel that you are in a position that you don't love your life, then shame on you. Because your life is a beautiful thing. And no one deserves to ruin it. No one deserves to control it. No one deserves to steal your joy. Your life is your life and you have the right to live it the best way you can. You must discipline yourself and take full control and responsibility for the outcome or whatever it is that you are seeking at this moment. There are going to be so many different things that you will embark on. There are going to be so many different things that's going to try to slow you down. There are going to be so many different challenges that you must face. But instead of running away from the challenge, run towards the challenge. Be able to understand that life has meaning. It has reason. And all of these things that you may be thinking that is so hard on you. Just remember, sometimes you're going to have to go through these changes, these circumstances that put you in a position to make you feel that you're not worthy anymore. But make no mistake, you are worthy. You were created for something. You wasn't created for nothing. Life has a gift. A gift of giving. A gift of receiving. And whether if it's good or bad, you got to make sure you understand that these circumstances and these challenges has to happen in your life. You will come to a point that you may feel that you are in a hopeless situation. You may come to a point in your life where you are at the end of a rope and the only thing left to do is to climb up because you only can do so much for so long. But make sure you're doing much more instead of doing less. Stop stressing about the things that you cannot control and stop focusing on the things that you have control of. Take control of your life. Take control of the opportunities. Believe in yourself and know that it is not over for you. So many people out there in this world right now We'll try to tell you not to be something that you feel in your heart that you want to be. 
So many people out there right now are miserable and they'll try their best to take you with them. Do not let misery control the life that you have. Do not let anyone tell you how to live it. Do not let anyone validate your purpose. Do not let anyone validate your destiny. Someone told you a long time ago that you wasn't worthy. Someone looked you in the eye and said you wasn't going to make it. I say to you right now that you will make it. I say to you right now that you must make it. I say to you right now that you must tell excuses, fear, and doubt that it has no place in your place of business. For this is your life that you are fighting for. This is your life that you are living for. And make no mistake, no one is going to do you better than you. Don't wait for something to happen. You make it happen. You make it happen for a reason. And take full responsibility and control of this thing we call life. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you life is gonna be Ron Howard happy days every day. It's not gonna be that way. Matter of fact, it's probably gonna be the opposite. You see, the enemy is gonna throw everything he has in his toolbox at you. Now, he can't stop you himself, but his objective is to get you to stop you. This message is for the struggle, for all those going through trials and tribulations. People in this world are gonna fool you, disappoint you, turn their back on you. The closest around you are gonna give up on you. And when things hit the fan, everybody's gonna run. You're gonna look around and you're gonna be all alone. I'm just keeping it real with you because somebody out there needs to hear what I'm saying. This ain't a motivational video. Man, this is life. This ain't no game to me and I know what you're going through. And I'm going to speak life into you right now. Nothing, listen to me, nothing can stop you. God will never leave you nor forsake you and that is all there's a power inside of you that you can only discover when you are truly alone. Just as the waves on a beach shore come in and out, people will do the same. Relationships are like music and you should never make music when anybody who doesn't understand, appreciate and value your lyrics. Sometimes, you just gotta let these people go. You gotta know your worth. Sometimes you just gotta let them people go. You gotta stop chasing people who don't appreciate you. Sometimes in this life, champion, you gotta remind the world just who you are. And you don't do this by telling them with your mouth. You tell them with your actions. You make your actions speak loud and proud to who you are. Don't let the world convince you that you're a nobody. You're somebody who just don't know it yet. Do you hear what I'm saying, champion? I'm speaking to the champion in you. Rise, champion. The way of the warrior. Champion eyes. Get back up. My spirit cries. Fear dies, choked out by the scream, the desire to climb and live out my dream. Take it for the team. Discipline reigns. I want it too bad to listen to the pain. I'm a winner. To God be the glory. Tragedy and setbacks, an inspirational story. Warriors like me, 
We were strategically designed for the struggle. Many before me gave up and quit. Acted all bad <laughs> till the first time they got here. But see, blood don't scare me. I fear not death. Whatever it takes, champion, to be the best of the best. I was made for war. I cry out to heaven. Blessed and unstoppable. An immortal legend. Climb, I say, the unclimbable mountain. Kicking and punching. I just keep on pounding. I found it. That deep desire to win. I remember defeat and I say, never again. See, warriors like me, we were born and strategically designed for the struggle. The way of the warrior, champion eyes. Get back up, my spirit rise. Fear dies. Choked out by the screams, the desire to climb and live out my dreams. Take it for the team. Discipline reigns. I want it too bad to bow to pain. I'm a winner. To God be the glory. Tragedy setbacks. An inspirational story. Many before me gave up and quit. Acted all bad to the first time they got in. Blood don't scare me. I fear not death. Whatever it takes, champion, to be the best of the best. Climb, I say, the unclimbable mountain. Kicking and punching, I just keep on pounding. Because I'm a warrior, and that's what we do! I see millions of motivational speakers that speak to the rich, that speak to the successful. I said, who speaks to the broken? Who speaks to the individuals that's still in the process? Who speaks to the individuals that doesn't want to live anymore? Every motivational speech you ever heard, I was talking to myself and I was telling my story. I couldn't read till I was 16. I buried my mother to a heroin overdose. My father was a hitman. I used to sneak in crack houses to sleep next to my mom to make sure she was safe at night. But through all the chaos and all the pain, God built a warrior. So when y'all see King Hollis, and every time I drop a speech, I'm dropping it for you. That person that want to give up on his life, I'm, I'm dropping it for you. That person that don't know that they have greatness inside of them, I'm dropping this for you. See the difference between a good player and a great player. See, that good player does just the minimum to get by. That great player pushes his body past the limit. He leaves every single drop of blood on the field. And whatever he does in life, he wants to be remembered as the greatest. He does that extra 10 when a coach only asks for 20. He runs that extra mile when a coach only asks for five. See, he knows he's going to have to dig deep inside his soul to break.
bring out that king. To bring out that legend. To bring out that power that lays in every single one of us. But we won't go deep enough to get We're not gonna be good. We're gonna be great. Being broke is a mindset. That's something that you put inside your head. That's something that you tell yourself every single day. I literally started from the side of a Turkey Hill gas station. And all I did was ask someone, could you give me an opportunity to go into your studio? Could you give me an opportunity to walk into this place every single day and create my motivation? The time didn't take long. It was only two to three minutes and I'll finish a speech and I'll give it out because many of you guys don't know, I do not write speeches. Everything I do is from the heart. So what I did was I truly believed that I have something special to give this world. And I want you to know that you have something special to give this world. Don't, don't ever believe that the lack of funds is the reason why you're not being successful. This is not true. The lack of belief is why you're not successful. Every single human being on this earth is a walking million dollar check. And our belief in ourselves, our grind, our true grit to wake up every single day and tell ourselves and tell the world that I will be something special is what separates you from everyone else. I learned that when I stopped being envious of people and stopped judging people and stop being angry that I'm not on their level is when I truly started to elevate in my career. I said, I told myself, I will never take a dollar bill from another person. I will never sell my dream and my gift to anyone for any dollar amount. Don't you ever do that. And every morning you wake up and you look in the mirror, I want you to look in that mirror and I want you to tell yourself that I am special, I am great, and I am phenomenal. Nobody will stop me from reaching my goal. My goal, my individual goal, is to become one of the best speakers of all time. But I know I have so much work to do. While they sleep, I must work. While they party, I must grind. While they procrastinate, I must go after my future with a relentless effort. And I want you guys to grow to be successful with me. I don't want to just be successful by myself. I want my message to grow other people and make other people successful. That's what life is truly about. It's about picking great individuals and taking them with you. We gotta make this decision in our life today, kings and queens, that we will not be ordinary. We will be great. We will be kings. This life is about serving and giving and being true. We live in a world where people believe everybody is out to get you. But I'm telling you now, some people is just out to love you. So for the rest of my career and the rest of my life, I want you to look at William Hollis as your brother, your family, because we are. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter where you came from. The only thing that matters is who loves you now. Growing up in the projects of Pontiac, Michigan, I realized two things. I realized that I won't make it if I believe that this is my reality for the rest of my life. And two, I had to realize that all the knowledge and my gifts were already placed inside of me at birth. 
All I have to do is fine tune. All I have to do is keep working on this craft every single day and I can be successful. When I sat on the side of that Turkey Hill gas station, I realized that no one would believe in me. No one, no one will say, William Hollis, one day your speeches will be played all around the world. No one. And I realized that pain was necessary. I realized that without my belief, I cannot go to the next level. And I want you guys to know every piece of motivation I give you, I'm talking to myself. The world just happens to hear. Let's become legendary. Let's not focus on who don't see anything in us. Let's focus on everything that does. You are filthy rich. You were born rich. We're going to forget about the generational lack. We're going to forget about the people who left us. And we're going to focus on the people who love us. We're going to focus on the people who believe in us. Because you have greatness inside of you. You have an everlasting potential. And as long as you have a heartbeat, as long as you have air in your lungs, you have an opportunity to change this world, change your life, and live your dream today. You are not broke. You are filthy rich. You were born rich. We will be royal forever. Remember the time when you wanted more. Remember the time when there were people in your life that did not believe in you. Remember the time when you honestly gave up on the possibilities of the uniqueness that you had inside. Remember there was a time that you complained so much but yet did so little. There comes to a point in your life that you must recognize that there's a little bit more that has to be done than just complaining about it. You have to realize that you don't have any other opportunities waiting for you if you're not willing to work for the first opportunity that's been given to you. You don't have a lot of time left. So there's no reason to complain. You're not even in the position to complain. You have to figure out that there has to be another idea about you and you have to understand that there has to be something even greater and more challenging waiting for you. And if you're not willing to step outside of your comfort zone, if you're not willing to understand the principles and the possibilities that you have within yourself, then everything that you are thriving for, everything that you are hungry for, will soon come to an end. Now I'm not here to preach to you about this. I'm here to let you know that there are things that are going on around you right now that are far greater than your complaining. You complaining about so much, but yet you show no action. If you could trade places with someone right now, and the person that you are trading places with may have it just a little bit tougher then you have it going on in your life right now. So many people are suffering from so many things in this world at this moment. But yet you're complaining. So many people in this world right now wish they could trade places with you. But yet you're still complaining. You don't have that right to just give up. 
You don't have that right to just throw in the towel and say that it's over for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand that the reason that you are existing in this world right now is because you have things that must be done and only certain people are qualified to take it to the level that it needs to be taken to. For there should never be a limitation to wherever it is that you are seeking and how far you are willing to travel and how far you are willing to go. Sometimes people tend to get a little lazy. Sometimes people like to put themselves in this little bitty box and just say that they are okay with where they are. There can never just be an okay to anything when it comes to that life. There should never just be a complacent mindset. How do we evolve? How do you evolve? How do you grow? One thing about success, there are going to be many struggles. There are going to be many challenges. And there are going to be a lot of things that you may not even understand. But you got to go back to where it started. Remember when you want it more. Because you cannot satisfy your hunger with negative energy. Being negative doesn't help you to grow. Being doubtful doesn't give you the power that you need. You have to come to a point in your life that you must realize that there are things that are going on that is testing you. And maybe you may be in a position where you feel that you are broken or you're feeling that you're going to be broken. But I'm here to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that you are built to last. I'm here to let you know that you don't have the right to complain anymore. I'm here to let you know that you got to keep on living and living on strong. I'm on government assistance and I run out of money and I have to buy Pampers for Jelani. And I had $11.42 in the bank. And I remember wrapping my son in a towel for two days. I remember the second day, like you said, I had my, my hand on Jelani's stomach and I said, don't worry, baby. Mommy will never be this broke or broken again. And that day, what shifted for me was I was willing, and I don't know if this is gonna sound crazy, I was willing to completely die to any form of me that I had been so that I can birth the woman that I was becoming. The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. And you hear it all the time when people say, I've always been this way. Okay, well, if that's working for you, keep doing that. I knew it wasn't working for me any longer. I had hit my version of rock bottom. So I was willing to let go of everything and everybody. See, another reason why people won't get there is because the doorway is for you to fit through. You're trying to carry everybody else through because you're trying to be rescue 911 and you gotta rescue you first. I am much more valuable to my family and to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself, teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get them. I'm much more valuable to them now. But I had to go through a window time of 10 years of judgment. You leaving us, hanging out with white people all the time. You going to these crazy countries. We, we don't know what you, I, I had to be willing to, to allow my conviction to make me inconvenienced. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. But most of us aren't like that. Facebook is example, we want to be liked. Well, I woke up and I like myself today, so your like is extra. My, my job is to like me first. I was willing to say every day, Lisa, you like you? 
Lisa, are you proud of you? Lisa, are you playing for loud every day before I checked in with anybody else? I was willing to inconvenience my entire life. My entire life. I was willing to disrupt my entire life to buy my future, to buy my possibility, to give my dream a chance. See, we're not supposed to tuck our dreams in on the, on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home and go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. My, the human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, what's our command for today? tomorrow what do you want to create it's not keeping score your brain is keeping score because your brain is designed to keep you safe your soul your intuition your human spirit is designed to make you soar when you get to the edge your brain will always tell you to step back it's always going to tell you to step back because you can fall, always. It's gonna tell you to step back. Because before you fail, the last time you did this, you saw someone else fail, you could hurt, you could be off work. It's gonna tell you, it's designed to keep you safe. So you have to be willing to play between your brain and your soul. And on some days, you gotta just listen to your soul. And you gotta say, I'm gonna leap, I'm gonna get to the edge. Most people are at the edge, and you're standing at the edge, and you're watching everyone else fly. That's pit my ride, watch my crib, all this stuff. You know, watching people's lives on Facebook. You're at the edge, watching someone else live, wondering what it's gonna be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Because only three things can happen. You're either gonna jump and fly, or you're gonna jump and fall on something soft. Are you going to fall down hard? Either way, you're going to get back up. You already know you got what it takes to get back up. You're not, your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly. That you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are. Before they really get your fingerprint. Before they really feel your breath. Before they really get your contribution. Before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. All I'm doing is giving my, my dream a chance. And I'm not extraordinary. You don't get off the hook. You don't get to be let off the hook. I'm an ordinary woman who chooses every day to make one more extraordinary decision. Everything that I need to get back up, I have in me. If I don't have what I need, I can go get it. Once I figured that out, the world was my like playground. Like just, the question was just, where do I go get it? Where do I, oh, I don't know about that. Where do I go get it? Right. And um, and I don't come from a learning background where I was a great student. I wasn't, you know, my highest grade in school was a C plus. And when I got a C plus, I did the happy dance. <laughs> and um, and so I didn't have a background where studying was natural for me. Mm -hmm. But when I realized that if I go study something and I learn it. I own it, it's mine now. Right. Man, it was crazy, because all through school I struggled. I, the last time I took an English class, my English teacher told me I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire life. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. And the same year I took a speech class, and my speech teacher, he said, quote unquote, Miss Nichols, I recommend you never speak in public, that you get a desk job. Oh. And so I- That's mean. Yeah, it just, it's just, you know, it was, it was demotivated people, mm -hmm. um, sad people, hurt people hurt, sad people make other people sad. Hurt. Bottom line, don't take it personal, hurt people hurt. Mm -hmm. See, most people want the convenience of transformation without the inconvenience of required, ass, required for transformation. So my grandmother says, and I love to repeat this, your conviction, what you're passionate about, your conviction and your convenience don't live on the same block. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't even in the same zip code. So if you wanna have a conviction for something, you have to sign up, sign up to be inconvenienced. We're trying to find convictions and passion and breakthrough on the inside of our box. Well, when you realize that the box doesn't even exist, like someone made up, oh, you're playing outside the box, so we all bought into, there's a box. Well, I don't live in, I don't even own a box. 
I don't even, I don't even want to get in your box. <laughs> like, mm -mm, you better come out here because I ain't getting in there. And so when you start thinking like that, Tom, all of a sudden, everything is possible. So I, you know, pe I disrupt people when I say, you want to make me extraordinary because it lets you off the hook. What if the God that we call God, the divine, whatever your faith is, what if there's no partial? It's not going to give me a hookup and not give you one. It's not going to give me an opportunity and not give you one. I'm just going to go after it. If I die, I'm going to die on a treadmill, like Wilson said. I'm going to be on the treadmill running. You know, I'm, not, I'm just not going to stop because I believe all things are available to us. I'm just willing to go after them. Are you willing? And then that is so disruptive because then you got to make a decision. Because it's easier to live inside the parameters of, well, as a black woman, well, as born and raised in South Central, well, I'm academically, I'm dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. I wrote seven books. I'm dyslexic. So just knowing, like, I'm not perfect. What I do really well is I manage my imperfection well. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you, and it's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. Any story. Like the fact, the beauty of me being one of the top 1% earners in America is that I was on government's assistance. Right. Like that's the beauty. Like, come on, it wouldn't be a big deal if my family was rich <laughs> or whatever. Like, it, I'm supposed to do something. The beauty is that when you show the little engine that could story, like I'm not gonna run fast, but I ain't gonna stop running. I might slow down and have to breathe and catch my breath, but I'm not stopping. Because I believe all things are available to all of us. And good people should do well. Because when good people do well, good people just do more good in the world. I'm that same girl who ran track for Dorsey High School, who struggled to get through high school, who got kicked out of college because I couldn't afford to stay. That was on government's. I'm that same girl. I'm that same girl. I don't forget her. I'm also that same woman who runs a multi-million dollar business. I'm also the same woman who has seven bestsellers. I own both of those. I own all of it. I don't shrink to my greatness and I don't live in my saga and my sorrow. If you can own your brilliance while owning your, your imperfections, if you can own your giant while owning your smallness, if you can live in duality, constant duality, the freedom will be earth-shaking if you can live in that. See, either you don't want to be as great as you really are and you're trying to dim your light so that others won't feel insecure about themselves in your presence. And so you keep playing at 79 watts when you know you're supposed to shine at 159 watts. And you keep checking the temperature of the room to see what the room can handle versus just giving the room you and letting them, if, the, if your light's too bright, then let them put on some shades. Can you give yourself permission to live in the duality of your imperfections and your smallness and what you're learning and what you still have to learn and your greatness and your brilliance and your light? Can you allow them to coexist and then serve them up to the world? To love you, to see you, to inhale you, to judge you, to leave you, to love you. You're just, some of us are just as afraid of being loved as we are to be left. If you go where you've never gone, do what you've never done and say what you never said, you'll become the woman and the man you've always known yourself to be. Some of you don't even realize you have unfinished business. You need to go back where you left off with a new perspective. Go back to the gym. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the business. Go back to the relationship. Go back to the burning building. You have unfinished business. All you gotta do is show up with a new game plan and a new perspective. You gotta finish business. You have unfinished business. You got work to do. Perspective is everything. Let's go. I need you to hear me loud and clear. How you see this thing is everything. You cannot change the past, but you can change your perspective about it. You gotta see this thing differently. Stop complaining about the divorce. Stop complaining about the job loss. Stop complaining about the relocation. Your viewpoint is your advantage. Thank you for breaking up with me. Here's what you did. You opened up another opportunity for somebody else to come into my life. Thank you for firing me. You gave me an opportunity to explore entrepreneurship. I'm not bitter, I'm better. Perspective is what changes the game.
Everybody wants increase and, and abundance and lifestyle change and new zip codes and new area codes, but you only read once a week and you only work out once or twice a month. And so the, the reason why you don't have what it is that you see, the reason why what's in your head is not in your hands, it's not your reality, it's because your perspective opposes your potential. You don't have it because you don't see the value in it. If you believe you've been called to be the difference maker, the game changer, the disruptor, the person that comes into a room and commands the atmosphere. If you believe you've been called to be necessary and not grossly irrelevant, then everything you do, everything you see, everything rises and falls on your perspective, your perception, your viewpoint. How do you see this thing? What happens? When your perspective, your perception diametrically opposes your reality, if you are going to give and grow and evolve and attain and become, everything rises and falls on your viewpoint. Show me somebody that hates to work out and I'll show you a man that almost lost his life and the doctor said, if you don't work out, you'll die. One sees it as cumbersome. One sees it as a problem. Another one sees it as a privilege. He sees it as his second chance, his new lease on life, that I have to work out. I get to work out. I get a chance to live a little longer. So one person sees the gym as a prison and another person sees the gym as a passport. One man came within inches of losing his life and another man has never come within a hundred miles of losing his life and he only works out twice a month and somebody else works out four or five times a week. The reason why you only do it once or twice a month is because you don't see the value. Your viewpoint is either your advantage or your assassin. Your viewpoint will either get you going or get you killed. We see a storm, we see rain, and we think depression. We think, I can't do anything. Instead of thinking, grass can't grow without rain. Roses don't bloom without rain. Number one, there's one thing I need you to stop saying, and that is, I should do something. That perspective, that viewpoint, that ideology, that philosophy, that mindset, is gonna get you bankrupt, I should start this. I should stop that. I should forgive. I should. You don't get what you should. You get what you must have. I must work out X amount of times a week. I must forgive. I must evolve. I must become. I must retain. I must grow. I must live. I must evolve. I must go to the next level. I must live in this type of house. I must drive this type of car. I don't care how bad you think the shoes are that you are wearing, there is another man in this world who will kill to walk a mile in the pair that you wear. Marcus, what does this mean? This means that what you are complaining about, what you hate, what you can't stand, what you want to walk out of, what you want to give up on, there is somebody out there that would die to be in your position. And so here's what I need you to ask yourself. Is this problem an issue or is it an opportunity? Some of you, all you've been waiting for your whole life was an opportunity. What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you loved was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them? I need you to see the bigger picture. I need you to have a little gratitude. You need to learn how to smile. You need to work out. I know you hate the gym. I know you hate to lift weights. I know you hate cardio. I know you don't like drinking water. I know you don't like taking care of your temple. You think it's the hardest thing to do in the world to commit. But there is somebody who's in the grave today. And if they had another opportunity to live, they would enthusiastically, with great confidence and courage and consistency, do what you hate just to live a little longer. Find the positive, see the bigger picture, guard your gratitude. 
the trial, the tribulation, the adversity, the giant is not your assassin. The giant is your opportunity. Are you going to complain in the face of conflict or are you going to seize the opportunity? I don't care what it is that you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to give, how you're trying to evolve, what you are looking to become. Everything rises and falls on your perspective. Stop complaining about the jealousy and the envy and the backbiting and the person that gave up on you and the person that wasn't present and the person that lied to you and the person that attempted to manipulate and control. I'm not weary, I'm wiser. I'm not toxic, I'm triumphant. I see this thing differently. This season that you've entered into did not come to break you. It came to build you into the man or woman God has destined you to be. Change your perspective. There's a reason why they say, see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't see that light, you're gonna lose your mind. You will lose yourself. You will snap in half if you don't see past this. The challenge for many of us is that we got to see past our present pain and into the fruitfulness of the future. The right perspective makes the impossible possible. You cannot change the past, but you can always change your perspective. No problem could be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. The severity of your problems is a matter of perspective. Change your perspective and most of them become insignificant. Some of them will no longer exist as problems, but opportunities. The right perspective is the instrument you need, the tool you need. It's a discipline, it's an advantage. If you change the way you look at things, then the things that you see will change. Knowledge, a speech, a motivational moment will not sustain you unless you put it into perspective. How will you see the rest of your day? Because how you see the rest of your day will oftentimes determine the way you see the rest of your life. Shift your perspective. If you can change your perspective, you can change the future. Many of you listening to me right now, you have unfinished business. And you need to go back to that dream, back to that idea. You have a date with destiny. You have unfinished business. It's time for you to go back to the drawing board with a new perspective. It's your viewpoint. And watch this. Your perspective actually shapes your language. And your language shapes your world. And so if you don't start thinking right, you're not going to talk right. And if you're not talking right, you're not going to experience the world that you see in your head. I don't know who God has called you to become, but what I can tell you is if you keep seeing it the way you have seen it, you will never become it. Everybody wants next level. Everybody wants wealth and influence and everybody wants to be this esoteric novelty. But listen to me, you will never experience any of this showing up in your next season with the same viewpoint. The right perspective makes the impossible possible. you feel like your life is gonna last a long time. And if I was to talk to my 26 year old self, I would tell that kid that you don't have time. And, and you really, you don't know when it's gonna end. And so, Get out there and do the things you want to do. Get out there and get after them now. Don't wait another second.
take advantage of it. Get out there and live and strive to be better because the life you've got which I just said was a gift, it is a gift. So live it. Yeah, I, I always wanted to be a commando ever since I was a little kid. And I heard that the SEALs were really tough and that the training was really tough. And then, you know, once you get in, everyone makes a big deal out of buds that's, but it's, it's in the SEAL teams, it's no big deal. Everyone goes through it. It's, you get cold, you get wet, whatever. You do a bunch of push-ups and pull-ups and dips. Anyone that gets to the SEAL teams and does deployments overseas and has a real career, they're not talking about BUDS training. <laughs> it just, mean, just doesn't mean it. I had a guy that was, you know, a NCAA water polo team captain champion, and he quit. And I had a guy that was an Olympic alternate gymnast, and he quit. Just because someone's a good physical athlete, it doesn't mean that they're a good SEAL. Because being a good SEAL is a lot more than just being a good athlete. Being a good athlete is like the baseline. And it's everything that you've learned to do after that. A, a good leader, a guy that's tactically sound, a guy that makes good decisions, a guy that's good under pressure, a guy that doesn't ever give up on trying to accomplish a mission. Those are the things that make a good SEAL. So you're always learning and growing. And, and I was always learning until the day I retired. Because it's not a boom, this happened and everything changed. It's, it's a constant addition of skill set and repetition of situations where you become competent at your job. The fear of getting shot or killed is not on your mind when you're in the moment. You know, it'll build up when you're waiting to go out. You know, there's times where you're waiting to go out and you're like, thinking to yourself, okay, there's a lot of bad things going on out there and some of them have happened to me. But I think at some point you, you realize that there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, other than just quit and, and just resign yourself to a life of cowardice. But if you opt to not do that and you step up and say, okay, I'm ready. And if I die, I die. And once you overcome that, then nothing else to be afraid of. There's no one that wishes for peace more than people that have been to war. Because when the war drums sound, it's my friends that are going to fight. That's, that's who's going to fight. It's my friends that are going to, to put their lives on the line. So when the, when the war drums sound, the people that have been to war are the ones that actually say, let's think about this first. Because like I said before, and like everyone says all the time, and they say it like it's no big deal, but war is hell. And when you take an 18-year-old kid you're gonna go put him in a situation where he's gonna to have to kill people and possibly get wounded or possibly get killed himself. That's a traumatic experience. And so before you do that, you should think about why you're doing it and understand if, if the people have the will to fight. And the will to fight, as I've said many times before, the will to fight is the will to kill and it's the will to die. And those are some pretty big wills that you need to have. ever asked yourself the question, how did I get here? Many times we make subtle decisions that don't seem to be a big deal, but what we often fail to realize is that where you are today is the result of all of the decisions, big and small, that you've made up until this point. The good news is, even if you are not where you want to be right now, you still have a chance to rewrite your script. Yes, it's frustrating when you do not accomplish what you've expected to accomplish within the time frame that you set. Yes, all of us want our journey to be a straight path. But in actuality, your journey will have unexpected stops, 
It will have curves, it will have hills, it will have valleys, you will have sunny days, you will have rainy days. But you have to decide. If I encounter rejection, if I encounter frustration, if I am disappointed, I will not give up. The key is to learn how to separate your feelings from your performance. Yes, some days I don't feel like working. Some days I have to battle with unfair situations. But at the end of the day, I have a decision to make. Either I'm going to have a pity party or I'm going to figure out how to pull myself up. So I say to you today, pull yourself up. Up. Lift up your bow down head. Guess what? Every day I have to choose to pull myself up. There will always be something that you can complain about. There will always be something that you could be worried about. But what I'm challenging you to do is to pursue your goals in spite of what's going on around you. Take a close look at your life, your health, your relationships, your business, your career, and ask yourself a simple question. Have I given my all? If you are not careful, fear, doubt, and worry will keep you stuck wishing your circumstances were better, but never doing what it takes to improve them. It's time for you to pursue what you really want, not what others want for you, not what others expect from you. But you got to pursue what you really want with everything you've got. My freshman year, I don't play a lick. And before I knew it, I lost my mindset again. And I began to recalibrate. You know, everybody doesn't play in the NBA. I'll graduate in four years. You know what? I just go get a good job. It's okay. It's okay. And the end of my freshman year, my daddy called me on the phone. He asked me questions. He said, son, you're not playing. Why not? Politics, dad. It's political. My father asked me questions. He says, how did your coach get paid, son? I said, Dad, he gets paid to win. He says, okay, son, if your coach gets paid to win, won't he play the players and give him the best chance to win? He said, son, you got recruited. You took all your visits. You chose Minnesota. You took the time and you chose Minnesota. You told me that you're going to turn that program around. You told me you're going to graduate in four years. You told me you're going to make more money in business than you did in sports. One of the core values of our training and development called family was accountability. That was the core value of that training and development organization called the Bond Family Accountability. He said, so go back and do what you said you're going to do. My father reminded me of what I said I was going to do. I went back to my coach's office. I said, coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He looked confused. This is what I told him. I'm going to become somebody different. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? I'm taking this thing to the next level. We're about to rise up. So for you to be passionate, your logic and your emotions need to be intertwined. See, some of you guys have the intellect and some of you guys have the passion, but you have to have both to be successful in this business. Sharks are hunters and predators. They never stop swimming. In fact, if a shark stops swimming, it will die. If a shark goes backwards, it will die. Think like a shark, act like a shark, and behave like a shark. Can I ask you a question right now? Can I ask you a real question? Not your neighbor, I'm talking to you. What kind of student are you right now in life? You're in charge of your promotion. If you do five million and want to get to 10, you're in charge. In order for you to rise up, you better take your game to the next level. Your mindset needs to go to the next level. Your information needs to go to the next level. Your relationships need to go to the next level. Take your money and get information and access and you will get good habits and good rituals and you will go to the next level. Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He says you can't run, you can't jump, you can't dribble, you can't shoot, and you can't rebound, son. Next year, I'll be your most improved player. I'm going to think. I'm going to execute, and I'm going to win. I'm going to think. I'm going to execute, and I'm going to win.
I'm going to execute what I've been trained to do. I'm connected to a shark. I'm connected to the greatest training organization in the world. And when I get home, I'm going to become somebody different. What do I need to do? You need to have an honest self-assessment about what your weaknesses are. And that's how you get to the next level. My sophomore year rolls around. We go all the way to the Sweet 16, and I'm the top six man in the country. I go back to my coach. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? The list got shorter. The next year, we went all the way to the Elite Eight. We were one shot away from the Final Four, and I was the top six man in the country. I carved out a niche. And that's what impact players do. They make their community better. They make their city better. They make their town better. They make realtors better. Be an impact player and anyone in your life, if they need a shark, you become their shark. All I had to do was have one good year and I walked right into the NBA. My senior year, everything lines up. But the first game of my senior year, I break my foot. I come back in six weeks and I break my foot a second time. In my mind, my college career was over and my NBA dreams were dead. I have seven points a game. I got offered a $75,000 job because one of our season ticket holders liked me. Right before I took the job, my daddy called me on the phone. He would always ask the right questions at the right time. He said, you had a tough year, son, what's next? I said, Daddy, I'm going to be a hospital administrator, $75,000 job. He said, not bad, son, but can I ask you a question? Do you believe you're an NBA player? Come on now, Dad. I only have seven points a game, Dad. We're not like these other black families that just need basketball, Dad. We're educated, Dad. We're not dependent on basketball, Dad. We're balanced, Dad. We're educated, Dad. I got a $75,000 job, Dad. Do you believe, son? He was checking my mindset. He was checking to see, was I thinking like an A student? I are falling back into that C mindset. Do you believe you're an NBA player? I said, yeah, Dad, I do. He said, well, go for it, son, but, but Dad, I never started in college, but, but, but. My father said, you told me, son, that you're going to turn that program around and you did it from the bench, son. You told me you're going to graduate in four years, son. The average student graduating five. I'm proud of you. But you told me that you're going to play in the NBA. And you told me you're going to make more money in business than you did in sports. Do you believe you're an NBA ball player? I do, Daddy. Go for it, son. Go for it. I go back to my coach's office and I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He teared up. I teared up. He said, I'll be honest with you, son. When I recruited you, I heard you as a mama's boy. But you're not. In fact, you're one of the toughest players I've ever had. I'm a Hall of Fame motivational speaker. I go all over the world running my mouth. But he gave me the greatest compliment I've ever received. He said, you're just like your daddy. <laughs> My daddy was a shark. And I was a sucker fish. But that moment was my opportunity to turn into a shark myself. If you hang around sharks long enough, it will transform your mindset. And I promise you, you will be like a shark. You will think like a shark. And you can't go backwards. And if you stop swimming, you will die. Brian Buffini, he can't go backwards. And if he stops swimming, he will die. So ladies and gentlemen, 
you're connected to the right shark. All you need to do is be a good sucker fish. Success is all around you. Just pay attention. Every time you leave a business meeting, consciously and subconsciously, that person is debriefing you. Are you likable? Do you brighten up a room when you enter, or do you brighten up a room when you leave? Are you good with people? And don't you ever be a Sarah Parasite, which means don't you ever come to this conference and go back home and do nothing. And then claim, oh, I tried and it didn't work. No! My college basketball coach said, son, I think you should be a motivational speaker. I said, coach, I can talk the rest of my life. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, if you do those two things, you're playing the NBA. You got to better shoot the three-point shot with range. And you got to lose about 15 pounds because you don't pass the eyeball test. When I talk about the eyeball test, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. He says the NBA thinks you're a football player trying to play basketball. You gotta lose weight to change the perception. I lost 15 pounds, and I became the first ever undrafted rookie free agent in the history of the NBA to start opening night. Why is the truth so important? You have to have the truth to have a starting point. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. We all look for toughness. We all want it, but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, you will not find it. The only way you find it is to Drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning. When you say, you know what, man? That. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. It's in our head saying, you know what, man? Dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. You're wasting a bunch of percentage here. In this other 80% is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness, and then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you gotta go through all of this shit. If you're not succeeding, you're not achieving, it's because you're afraid to go in that dark place to find yourself. You're setting goals you know you can reach. And when you do that, that fear, that insecurity, that doubt, that's where you grow. You must always set goals that you think you cannot achieve. And in there you get better. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, the amount of mental pain, of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. Every day, you must ask yourself, did I do enough? And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't wanna live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that shit we have nowadays, your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, when you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that shit, man. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, 
but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain and your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways and it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're fucked. You got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. It's over. All I knew back then was hard work. You got to work hard. You got to work hard. I can't get this paragraph. I can't remember what the fuck's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again. Still not getting it. Read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. I realized if I keep going back and going back and going back until the shit just becomes, your mind will say, fuck, okay, we're gonna figure it out. It'll find a way. Because he is not going to stop. It's not like, I'm gonna try one more time. No, alarm clock goes off, boop, we're going back. I can't read right, we're going back. I gave myself no way out and my mind realized that. They said, okay. We're gonna adapt and overcome now. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself wherever it is, and you become that. I became hell. And that became my new norm. I gave myself no way out. There was nothing outside these walls of hell. Nothing. I watched this segment on TV about these guys going through Navy SEAL training. And I couldn't even, I, I wasn't a great swimmer, I was afraid of the water, all this crap, man. I saw these guys just quitting. But at the very end, it says 22 guys, this command officer's up there and he gives this great speech. So I started visualizing me being the 23rd guy, sitting there with these guys. I said, man, if I could feel that, that would change my life. And what was that feeling you wanted so bad? Respect, accomplishment? No. Victory. I wanted to win. Not like beat somebody else. It wasn't about that. I, I, I just wanted to go the distance. Everything in my life, when something got hard, I quit. I had to work harder than you, so I quit. Like, man, if I could just go that distance, that extra mile, to just go, just to finish. I want to finish. I want to feel victory. And victory for me wasn't winning, it was just finishing. So I said, you know what? If I could feel like these guys feel, it would change my life. And literally, I started feeling victory just by putting myself in the battle. I started realizing, man, just by going to war with myself every day, and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles, now we can move from there. If you look at it as, man, I'm broken and I'm still here, and I'm fighting, and I'm gonna find a way to get through this, because I have no other place to go, it gives you a lot of power. And no one really finds themselves without going through trials, tribulations, suffering, accountability. And accountability is suffering. Being accountable every day for doing right, for yourself, for the people next to you, it's miserable. The more I did, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized, fuck these Navy SEALs, man. The, the, these guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. That's where he came from. He came from all these fucked up obstacles, and now he's there. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. Every day that you wake up, remember someone else did not. You are alive 
for a reason. Those voices in your head telling you to turn back, telling you that they'll fail. But I've failed in the past. I fell flat on my face. Listen to me. You can't have a better tomorrow if you're too busy thinking about yesterday. In times of adversity, you do not have an obstacle to deal with. You have a choice to make. It's no different because we've messed up, because you fell off the wagon, you've been on alcohol and drugs, and you gave up on life, and you dropped out, or you've been to jail one time, two times, three times, and you really want your dream to happen, and you're putting in your work, and nothing's happening yet. I promise you, if you keep pushing, if you keep giving me all your effort, it will happen. No matter how far you have sunk, no matter how hard you have fallen, you've got enough grit, you've got enough grace, you've got enough faith, you've got enough courage to stand up. It's time to rise. I will rise. You have to rewrite the story you've been telling yourself so that you can step into a new level of abundance, a new level of peace, a new level of happiness. Understand, if you want to make your dreams a reality, you've got to understand that you can't quit. Believe you can win. Because we only get one shot at this, King. We didn't come this far to come this far. You can always start fresh. You can write a new chapter, or you can choose to write an entire new book. You have the power. You have the tenacity. You have the grit. This is that time. This is that hour. This is that moment. Life will bloody your nose. Life will leave you in a cardiac arrest. Life will leave you in an accident. Life will knock you upside your head and dare you to get back up again. Others may quit, but not me. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not ever. Because I gave too much of this dream. It's up to you to keep calm and believe in your purpose. Go after that dream. Quit playing small. You were meant to do great things. You have time. You have the knowledge and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. One day you're going to realize your life is yours and there's a lot of people important to you that surround it but ultimately it's yours. Then you must decide where you want to invest this life. Invest in something worthwhile. You have to picture yourself there. Wherever it is, you've got to picture yourself there. All right, the next step is you've got to believe it. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. They were going to make a change, and then they made it. This is your moment. It's not tomorrow. It's not next year. It's not when you're going to graduate. It's right here, right now. And every choice you make, you're impacting that thing. We're going to be lying. You know, when a lion is injured, when a lion is bleeding, he licks his wounds, and he keeps walking. 
Your time is one of the most powerful tools you will ever have. Lay hold up! Lay hold up! And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will be like a shark. You will think like a shark. And you can't go backwards. And if you stop swimming, you will die. If life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. This is the year of the world. Act like you hear me. This is the year of the world. This is the year of the world. Act like it. The moment and the time for you to change your life is now.